Hey, what's going on, children of Israel? How y'all doing? Did y'all see my workout video this morning? 600 push-ups, three, uh, what was it, 300 burpees, something like that. 600 push-ups, 300 burpees. Uh, not bad for somebody out of shape, huh? My first little uh, exercise video. <laughs> Not bad, again, for somebody that's out of shape. Uh, excuse the noise in the background. I'll turn that noise off in a, in a few minutes. Uh, just warming up a little bit. Hope y'all doing great today. Like I said, uh, I'm going to build on that video. Uh, perfection is coming. Uh, that's not bad for a beginner. Somebody that's out of shape, who's never done that before that's not bad man huh I could have kept going I didn't want to overdo it on my first uh, go around I could have kept going okay so don't get it twisted and uh, I like to the uh, pretty soon I'm gonna I don't know when I'm gonna put up I'm gonna do some Navy seals uh, burpees and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. I'm going to do some five pump burpees. I'm looking forward to it. I can feel it. I can see it, man. I can see it in my spirit. You know? And uh, I know one day I'm going to at least get, do a thousand in one day. I probably could have did that today. But like I said, I didn't want to push it. I didn't want to overdo it. You know, first time go around. But uh, but, uh just, y'all just... Keep watching, keep watching. Uh, and uh, what we're gonna start today, Psalms 40. That kind of goes with what I did, that video, that exercise video. Uh, Cause I feel myself getting stronger and stronger. And that's all because of the spirit of the Lord. It says, uh, Psalms 40 verse 16. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation that's Jesus Christ. Say continually, the Lord be magnified. The Lord be magnified. Jesus Christ is the one magnified, right? Let's go to, uh, did y'all catch that? Do I, we re do I need to read that again? One more time. Let all those that seek thee, are you seeking his face? Or are you seeking his strength? Right? Let all those that seek thee rejoice got to seek him so you can rejoice and be glad in thee there's a lot of people trying to rejoice and be glad outside of the Lord man let's get that in let's go to Psalm 105 real quick hey man we're gonna let the Lord lead us man see where he takes us in this video Psalm 105 one two three four five oops one short. Uh, Psalm 105. There we go. Verse 4. Here's what I'm talking about. Verse 4. Psalm 105 verse 4. It says, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face evermore. Seek the Lord and His strength. See, I'm... I'm getting stronger in the Lord's strength, man. The, the goal is that the Lord fill us up with his glory and we rest in his bosom. He takes over the body. Yeah. So as we empty ourselves by pouring ourselves out, as he commands us in the word to pour ourselves out, that's in uh, Psalm 60, uh, uh, is that Psalm 62? Psalm 64, one of those. To pour ourselves out before the Lord. That's also Psalms 51. As we, what did John the Baptist say? I must decrease so he can increase. Again, the goal is to, his glory fills our this temple the, that we call our body. His glory fills this body. That's his strength. But you got to seek after him. You got to seek his faith. I see a lot of people in pain around me they in pain you know why they, they 
I got to say it this way. You in pain because you too far from the Lord. You might be watching this video. You might be somebody that's in pain right now. You are too far away from the Lord. Do you know the final judgment is that uh, the unbelievers or the sinners will have uh, suffering and pain for eternity? That's the final judgment? That's why we got to judge ourselves now with God's word. We got to go to the cross now. Uh, you have to accept his judgment that Jesus Christ brought us. And you got to co-sign your flesh to his cross so you can come out of that pain ram. I myself have followed the Lord afar off. And there was times I, ha I would have pains here and there in my body, in my knees, in my back. And that was the Lord's way of speaking to me, telling me that I'm too far off. I'm too far back. Well, King Superman, you got any scriptures to back up what you're saying? Oh, I'm glad y'all asked. Glad y'all asked. Let's go to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28. Really, uh, uh, verse, what is it, 14 on down? Deuteronomy 28, 14. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's start there. Deuteronomy 28, 14. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Remember, our God is a jealous God. We have to put no other gods before him. And you, you can have gods and you not call them gods. Just like you might spend too much time in front of the television watching movies so you done made movies your God even though you don't say movies is your God you you spend more time with the movies than you do Jesus or work some people go to work a lot and you done made your job your God your job gets more of your attention than Jesus some people are busy bodies man they running to and fro Right? Can't be still. So you done made being a busybody your God. Y'all starting to get this? We just read, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek the Lord's face. Let all them that seek him rejoice. You starting to get this? I'm going to tell you something. You are in pain because you are not seeking the Lord with all your heart. In all your soul. We reading it right now. Let's continue to read. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curse shalt thou be in the city. Curse shalt thou be in the field. You're going to be in pain in Walmart. You're going to be in pain when you go traveling, you're traveling, visiting your relatives. You know, because you go into the family reunions and stuff like that. You ain't seeking the Lord. And then you go around your family. You ain't saying nothing about Jesus. You ain't exalting Jesus. He's too far from you. You enjoying your family. And in traveling, and the riverboats, and other things, you you have made God. You put them before your God. That's why they are your gods. Uh, curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body. See that? Okay? Right? That's going to cause you pain. And the fruit of thy land. And thy increase of thy kind, and thy flocks, and thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in. Cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. I know people right now stay in the hospital. They stay sick. They keep falling. You know? They got pains here and there and everywhere. And they in the hospital more than they at, they, at, at the house. 
that they create. Then you know why? Because their heart is too far from the Lord. I'm just keep. I'm just making it blunt in this video. I'm just keeping it plain. This video should, should help somebody. It should help somebody. You know, unless you just love pain. Those of you who this video don't help, and you still won't seek the Lord with all your heart and all your soul, that means you love death. You love pain and suffering. And that's where you're going to wind up for eternity, except you seek the Lord. But you know the, the opposite, the reward of the Lord is his joy. What the Bible tells us, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And where the joy of the Lord is, guess what? That joy is anointing. That's that's a a, a balm in Gilead. That's yeah, that's a, a anointing anointing oil. You know, like uh, when you get burned, you, uh, there's certain creams and stuff like that, and oils that you can put on the burn. To soothe and coat that burn, to relieve that burn, uh, uh, cuts, scrapes, you know, even on your in the physical, there's certain uh, uh, medicines and ointments. That's the word I was looking for. Ointments, you know, that they have uh, even over the counter. Some you got to get a prescription from the doctor, and some is over the counter that you can purchase. But the best ointment comes from the Lord. The greatest ointment comes from the Lord. All right? Because He's the Lord that what? Heals us. He's the Lord that curses us. And He's the Lord that heals us. And our number one curse came when we were banished from His presence. Through your first mom and daddy, Adam and Eve, we were banished from the Garden of Eden. We were banished from the tree of life. We were banished from the face of the living God. Let me say, I'm going to hide my face from you. Now we got to seek his face. We have to seek his face. And um, let's finish this. Let's finish this. Because I don't want to get ahead of myself. And the Lord shall send upon thee cursings and vexation and rebuke. And all that thou settest thy hand unto for it to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doing. Whereby thou hast forsaken me. Look, there it is. You have forsaken me. And some of y'all and some of y'all right now will still make a little argument. I ain't forsook the Lord. I I I, I got the Lord. I know the but it's it's petty. It's it's the way you call yourself signal. Like for I'll give you an example, Christianity. Every one of them, we can talk to them right now. We can pull them up front, put them on the hot seat. Every one of them say they got the Lord. Every one of them will say uh, 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 they have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We can even do that with the Muslims. I got, I've got videos up right now. I caught a Muslim brother smoking. I done dealt with him two or three times. I caught him smoking. And he still insists he has a relationship with God. Even, even though he calls him Allah. See, that human mind, man, is very deceitful. It's very deceitful. What the Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. You still claiming you have a relationship with God and you in all kind of pain. You in all kind of sickness. You in all kind of affliction. When this Bible tells us many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him from them all. Now I ain't saying you you can't really have the Lord and be afflicted. Because that scripture right there just, you know, checks makes us if we think that way. But it said it does say. The Lord will deliver him from them all. So when you afflicted, and I've been afflicted, I told you that, in my back, in my knee, my body's been afflicted. 
I remember one time I was walking like a 90, 90 year old man. I was in so much pain. I didn't know where it was coming from because of my lack of understanding. It was, it was spiritual warfare. But the devil desires us to stay that way. Crippled and paralyzed. We see that in the scriptures. Jesus was healing people. And they was afflicted by Satan, the devil. Jesus himself was casting out demons. Some of y'all need got some of y'all just need demons cast out of you. You need Jesus to cast demons out of you. You ain't seeking his face but for him to cast the demons out. You being content with the demons. You mean as hell. You mean it. You can be mean as hell and you know it. But it don't trouble you. You not troubled by your meanness. You stubborn as hell and you not troubled by your stubbornness. You rebellious as hell and you not troubled by your rebellion. You're not fearing God. You're not fearing Him to depart from evil. You on the wrong ground. You in the wrong realm. You are, you on the wrong frequency. You're not on the right frequency. Seeking the Lord is on is the right frequency. Seeking Him with what? All your heart, all your mind. All your soul, all your strength. And I ain't got to go to every scripture for time's sake. But y'all know what's in there, what I'm saying. You should know. And if you don't know, that's my that's my point. You're not studying to show yourself approved. As, as you, are, you are existing as though you love pain. You are existing as though... You rather have the pain than the Lord. Do you know you're supposed to have more joy than pain? Do you know that? You're supposed to have more love than hatred? You're supposed to have more peace than stress? You're supposed to have more healing than affliction? You're supposed to have more Jesus than self. Than self. Anyway, let's finish this. Verse 21. There's a lot of meat here, man. I, I don't even think we're going to finish with Deuteronomy 28 in this video. It's just too much. The Lord shall make the pestilence, that's disease, cleave unto thee. A lot of our people got a lot of disease, man. A lot of affliction. Until he have consumed thee from off the land where thou goest to possess it. You know what that land is? That's the birthright. You banished from the from the holy land. You you banished from the land where there's where there's no affliction. Cause you ain't seeking his face. You not gonna get you you think there's a little temporary stuff that you encounter you might get a little temporary peace. You know, the world has a little bit of, you know, they call it peace. But it ain't God's peace. Anyway, they have a little temporary comfort. But it ain't God's comfort. There's people in the hospital. And they just content with that. Cool with that. Staying in that condition. And they have a form of comfort. In the hospital with the medicines and the doctors coming in the room every 10 minutes and you're not getting no good sleep out. And, I'm, and you think that's being blessed? And you in the hospital more than you at your creed. You see your doctors more than you see your family. Huh? And, I, and you get content with it. You get passive about it. That's not seeking the Lord's face. That's not seeking the Lord's strength. You're on all kind of medicines and medications, and that doesn't interfere with you with your with your faith. You can't tell me that has not interfered with your faith. Because you don't know what to take the medicine or to stand in faith. Because the faith got to be built up in your heart. 
faith begins and ends with your heart seeking the Lord. It's about your hungering and thirsting for righteousness, for salvation. That was the first verse we read, Psalms 40 and 16. You know? Let's go back and get that. Psalms 40 and 16. Psalms 40 and 16. This video should help somebody, man. I'm just keeping it 100. Some people don't like it when you 100. You know, that. Psalms 40 and 16. Let's read that again. It says, Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. In him we live and move and have our being. That's the, that's the holy land. Is is living in God's spirit. The Holy Spirit. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Let such as love thy salvation. There it is. That's Jesus Christ. God's salvation is Jesus Christ. Say continually, the Lord be magnified. Now we got to get that. It proves that. That's what we're saying. Some of y'all know where I'm going. You're picking it up in the spirit. Acts. What is it? Uh, uh, that's Romans. I want Acts. Acts. Uh, what is it? 17, 19? I think that's what it is. Acts 17, 19. Acts 17, 19. Or 19, 17. This is one of them. Uh, okay, 1917. Acts 1917. Acts 1917 says, And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on all them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Ain't that what we just read? Psalms 4016. This is your salvation. Right here. And all you who are afflicted, guess what? You don't magnify Jesus Christ's name. We, uh, we hey, we shining the light on it right now. I'm, we putting you out there with this video. We shining the light on you. You not magnifying the Lord Jesus Christ's salvation. You not magnifying His salvation. That's why you afflicted. That's not the greatest thing in your life. Jesus Christ dying for you, personal, your personal relationship with Jesus Christ is on trial. With this video, you on trial. If you can't stand the heat, you might as well get out this kitchen. I mean, get you probably go ahead and bounce out this video because it's gonna get hot. You can't stand the heat, get out this video, huh? Because we exposing you. And those of you who ain't in pain, who not seeking the Lord, guess what? Your pain is on the way. Your pain and suffering is coming. Because you won't seek the Lord's face. Because you won't rejoice and be glad in Him. So you won't magnify His salvation, which is His name. Jesus the Christ, the Black Messiah. Huh? Now let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. There's a lot of meat in Deuteronomy 28. Like I said, that's so deep. We ain't gonna be able to get. We ain't gonna be able to get all that. Deuteronomy 28. Uh. In fact, before I go back to Deuteronomy 28, let's go. Let's go to. Uh, let's throw some uh, some. Something else in the pot. You know how we do it. Jeremiah 17. Uh, what I say about the heart? We, th we talked about that earlier. Let's go on to it. 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. You know? So your pain and your suffering is because you ain't seeking his face. Right? 
is because you are not seeking his face. Okay? Right? He called you to a high place. He put his name on you through your ancestors. Right? He put his name on you and you're taking his name in vain. How are you taking his name in vain? You not magnifying him. You not seeking him with all your heart and all your soul. As the scriptures command you. You not obeying his command. You're not seeking his strength, his face. Huh? Uh, a glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. See, that's your sanctuary. It's high. It's glorious, and it's a high throne from the beginning. That's where he, that's where you're supposed to be. You remember how he called Adam? Adam, where art thou? And Adam had ran and hid himself. You hiding yourself. You hiding yourself. Behind some. Uh, 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 your flesh. Behind flesh. Behind self. Uh, remember self supposed to decrease. Self supposed to be destroyed. The Lord don't. The, hey, the Lord accept no man's person. You understand what that means? No man can see God and live. You got to be sacrificed. You running from the cross. You running from the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, you got to join yourself to Him. You know, He raises us up in His image and likeness through the cross. That glorious high throne is the cross of Jesus Christ. You don't want no part. Of, your flesh don't want no part of that. That's why you want to run as a fugitive. And a vagabond. That's what you are. A fugitive and a vagabond. On the run. From righteousness. You running from holiness. Adam and Eve said because we knew we was naked. So deep down you know you naked. Deep down you know you not clothed. You in your sins. And your pain is the reminder of it. Your pain and your suffering is a reminder that you are in your sin. That's really, that's in a lot of ways, that's still the love of God right there. Because he done put that little thermometer on you to let you know where your temperature is. To let you know where you at. And if the pain gets severe enough, it's supposed to draw you to him. But so many of you won't even, still won't come to him. Just like when we get to, uh, what is that, Revelations? Well, they still cursing the Lord out. The Lord sent all kind of plagues on them. And they cursing God's name. They don't want no, the Bible said they refuse to repent. No matter how the Lord afflict them, they refuse. Your affliction is for you to repent. Your afflictions is for you to repent. Do I need to repeat that one more time? Not to get comfortable, not to get used to the pain and the suffering and say, well, I'll just be comforted by the medications. I'll just be comforted by all these doctor's appointments. I'll just be comforted by these drugs. Legal and illegal drugs. It's still man-made inventions. That's still man-made invention. You trust him more. And that's that's God's. He told us we should not have no other gods. Before. You done made the drugs your God. The drugs is your comfort. The drugs is your peace. The drugs is what you look to. Uh, uh, with all your heart and all your soul. You looking for the drugs as your comforter. See how the enemy has deceived you? And you're going to have to let go of the pain and grab a hold of Jesus Christ. You're going to have to let go of the drugs and the doctors and the lies of the devil and your flesh. Stop listening to the voice of your flesh and call on the name of the Lord Jesus for his mercy and his forgiveness. He, you need forgiveness. 
You done swept your little lot sins under the rug. Your little heart, what we just read in, in verse 9, is deceiving you. Let's read that again in verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins and to give every man according to his ways and according to fruit of his doing. You reaping what you sowing. Let me say that. Did you catch that? You're reaping what you are sowing. Because you ain't, you ain't at that glorious high throne. The place of your sanctuary. You're not there. Verse 13. Let's skip down verse 13. O Lord, the hope of Israel. All that forsake thee shall be what, y'all? Let's say it together. Ashamed. You have forsaken him. Don't you know? I told you he put his name on you through your ancestors. You are the lot of God. You are his inheritance. No, you didn't. You didn't. He created you for him. Him alone. He's a jealous God. But you want your husband more than you want him. You want your wife more than you want Jesus. You want your children more than you want Jesus. He told us in Matthew 10. If you don't take the cross and follow me, he said, you're not worthy of me. He that loves a mother, father more than me is not worthy of me. He that loves a son, a daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You love your job more than Jesus. You love being a busybody more than Jesus. You spend more time with your doctors you have a, a, a little strange love affair with your doctors more than Jesus. You sure listen to them more than you listen to Jesus. Because you ain't seeking his face. You're not seeking his strength. And your pain is a reminder. Let's finish. Oh Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. And they that depart from me shall be written... In the earth. That means you're not going to be before his face. You're not going to stand before his face. Because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. You've forsaken him. You have taken his name in vain. Through, through your ancestors. And some of y'all went as far as getting baptized in Jesus' name. You got baptized in his name. And you dancing with the devil. You dancing with the devil. Verse 14. That's the point right here. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. See that? Your healing is in his hands. It's through his salvation, though. Heal me, O Lord. Huh? I know you done prayed this, but you ain't seeking him. You want the healing, but you ain't get you ain't gave him your heart. Everybody want these blessings that's in this book. But nobody want that cross that's in this same book. Nobody want that cross. You gotta put away stuff. You gotta sacrifice. You have to sacrifice stuff to get this healing, to get this blessing. Huh? You're going to have to make up your mind. Time is getting short. Time is getting short out here. Let's read that verse 14 again. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. You asking for healing. Look at this other part. Save me, O Lord, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. You need to be saved. If you get saved, you're going to get healed. And if you get healed and saved, guess what? You're going to be praising him. And your joy, your joy going to be full. All this is one. 
You know, we want to dissect the Lord like the world has done. They have dissected. You know how they parted his garments when he was on the cross? Huh? Son, they, son took his shirt. Son took his pants. You know, just parted the Lord's gear. You know, people say, man, I, people talk all the time. Well, I need peace. I need peace, man. I, I, I need love or whatever. You just dissect the Lord is all of that. Some people claiming they want joy. Some people claiming they want healing. Huh? We claiming this and that, the, the, the attributes of God. But you don't want God. You want the, the blessings of the fruit of the Spirit. But you don't want God himself. You don't want what God is requiring. That you go to the cross. That you become a sacrifice. Huh? You don't want to drink that cup. And the world is giving you a false peace. And a false comfort. And a false healing. And a false salvation. And you giving up a false praise. We dealt with that in other videos. Strange fire and all that. It ain't coming out of your, your heart. Out of your soul. You don't have no fear of God. You run your mouth too much. You're too fleshly. You're too carnal minded. You're too opinionated. You love yourself more than you love God. That's just it. You love yourself more than you love God. You're not doing what God has re required of you. Uh, you know? Uh, let's throw some more stuff in the pot, man. Let's, let's, I know y'all can handle it. Let's go, uh, uh, Exodus 25. Verse 8. Let's throw some more stuff in the pot. Uh, and let them make me a sanctuary. This is what he's requiring. Make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Ooh, do we need to go anywhere else? Did y'all see that? You know this is still standing. You know this is what you're supposed to be doing? That's why you ain't got the joy of the Lord? That's why you ain't got the peace that passes all understanding. That's why you you not loving, as Jesus said, love one another as I had loved you. Because you ain't doing this. You know, and let them make me a sanctuary. Right? That's your heart, your spirit, your soul, and your body. That I may dwell among them. And then it goes on, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. That's Jesus Christ. You know Jesus Christ is the tabernacle, right? Yeah, the volume of the book. You 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 supposed to prepare that the way of the Lord to come live inside you, to dwell inside of you, to live through you by sacrifice. By you drinking a cup. Magnifying his name. Exalting him. Personally. A personal relationship. He died for you. Your personal sins. You put him on that cross. He can't, He died on that cross for you. You ain't even cried. Actually about this. This one on one thing. This one on one. Seeing that it was for you. Personally. How many nights you stayed up crying about this? Have you ever cried one night? Stayed up all night long just weeping because he died for you? And you was trying to figure it out. Lord, why, why me? Why you died for me? Why me? Why you do it? Why you do it? Trying to get a, a, a deeper understanding. Even so shall ye make it. Right? And they shall make an ark. Uh, 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 this goes in. Oh, this is deep. But let's go down to uh, 
some more meat in here. But let's go to uh, uh, oh, that's deep. There it is, verse 16. And thou shalt put into the ark. This is your heart. Your heart's supposed to become the ark. Where, where God, uh, 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 a holy place for God. Where you will, uh, you become in the sanctuary. Where, that's like I said, where blessed are the pure at heart, for they shall see God. Yeah, get your heart right. What we just read in, in Jeremiah 17 now? The heart is deceitful, but you need a new heart. You need a new heart that he promises to give you. Right here in this book. You need the heart of Jesus. This is the gift of God is the new heart. But you lean in, you won't give up the old heart. You won't give it up. And that's what's causing your afflictions. That's what's causing your sorrow. That's what's causing your pain. That's what's causing your suffering. Your old heart. I, I'll show you. Just when I finish reading this. We're going to get that. We're going to cut that heart out. Right after this verse. And thou shalt put into the ark. The testimony. Which I shall give thee. You don't have the testimony. You do not have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Not in spirit and in truth you don't. Huh? You swearing unto God falsely. You falsely swearing unto God. All right? Let me show you Deuteronomy. What is it? 529? 529. 5... 29. As I told you, we're going to cut that heart out. That old heart. Deuteronomy 5, 29. This is what he desired. He says, Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. The Lord desires to give us this heart. You know? Uh, let's find that. There's several places to find this. Uh, Ezekiel 18 and 30. Ezekiel 18 and 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways. So we're saying Jeremiah 17. When Said the Lord God, repent. That's what you ain't did. Right here. See that word? Highlight that word. This is what you ain't did. This is what you got to do before you even get the new heart. You ain't repented. That's why you in pain. That's why you suffer. You... <laughs> Let this video be the video that trans